Welcome everyone to the live stream. Glad that you're here today. I am super excited. We have uh, become partners with Mind Manager, a uh, company that owns them is called Ludo, and we're going to be uh, uh, meeting with uh, Alex and Mark today, and we're going to go through some exciting things that you can do with Mind Manager. And uh, I mean, the tag of this uh, this particular one was, you know. What is, what is Mind Manager? We're going to talk about that today. I've been using, Mind Manager has been out since 1998. And I started using it early 2000s, probably 2002, 2003. Before that, I used Mind Manager principles where I'd actually write down by, by pen or pencil, colored crayons, uh, do mind mapping. And there's a book out by uh, Tony Buzan, and it's a really old book, and it's, uh, it's The Power of Mind Mapping. And he talks about, in this book, he talks about how uh, the way we our brain works and that linear thinking or doing to-do lists aren't as powerful or engaging as mind mapping. And so that's what got me started on that. And then as, as Mind Manager developed over the years, it's become such an incredible application that it, it's amazing the things that you can do with it. And so without further ado, let's bring on, let's bring on the, uh, the mind manager team. These guys um, are my new friends and I, I just, I think they're awesome. And uh, let's bring them on here. Good morning. Here we, go. we got Alex and Mark. Hey guys, how's it going? Great, great. Forgive the burnt, burnt orange. I'm in Austin, Texas, and uh, UT does play OU tomorrow, <laughs> so hook them. Um, also, pleasure to be here. I first found out about Mind Manager when I was working at Dell uh, a little over a decade ago, and um, I haven't launched projects since. But um, we have our customer <laughs> success manager here, Alex Smith. I'd like him to introduce himself as well. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, Gary is absolutely correct. We've become friends very quickly over our experiences with my manager. I have shared some examples and files with him that have blown him away, and he's done the same for me. So I'm excited to get into today's content. Awesome. Awesome. Now, one of the things that I, I want to mention, for those of you who haven't, um, let me just find it here. There it is. Um, for those of you who haven't registered for the draw at the end of this, there's the link right there, and I'll also put it in. I'll also put it in the comments. Let me pop that in there. There we go. So I've just popped that out there. Click on that link if you haven't uh, registered. Put your name in there, and uh, we've got a, a draw at the end here. So you'll want to stick around. And uh, if you if you have to jump off early, not a problem. We'll save that for you. All right, so let's uh, let's dive in. And uh, oh, let's just see. We got some. There we go. Yeah, just wanted to make sure that that was sent out. Okay, so let let's dive in. So I'm going to spend a few minutes just showing you what I've. Uh, used Mind Manager. Just a few of the the items that we've we've uh, used over the years personally, um, and then uh, Alex is going to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive and kind of give you an idea of because again, you know what what can I use this for? And we want to be able to show you some ideas of things that you can do. And um, one of the things that we are in the process of doing, and I should mention this right up front, uh, and Mark will catch me if I, if I would have forgotten it, uh, is that uh, we're going to be doing some integration with Mind Manager and Act CRM. And this is coming uh, down the tubes here. So, um, Mark, we, I guess we'll be working with some of your engineers and uh, kind of putting some, some stuff on the API connection between the two applications, correct? That's correct. And we've got an uh, engineering team that's going to support it. And fortunately, you have some pretty um, API savvy people on your team as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's uh, let's kind of dive into uh, next screen here. All right. So let me flip over here. There we are. So a few of the things that, that I've been using Mind Manager for um, we do all of our database development using Mind Manager. So if, if you're using an ACT database, this is what we do to start. And we have all the different tables 
uh, and, and we have all the different fields. If I pop that out, it'll show all the different fields that we use and any custom fields. We also have um, other information like timeline, when is this going to be done, uh, document filing, how is it structured, business intelligence, just a, just a ton of stuff that we capture. And this helps our team um, manage the design of your database. If you have an ACT uh, database, this is what we use to design it. Uh, the other one we use this for is a business dashboard. And we've, we've helped companies uh, create business dashboards for themselves where they'll key in information. They, they break their business into, into silos and then be able to pull this all together so that they can keep up with the things that need to be done. One of the things that, uh, that we've, we've worked with uh, a bunch of people with is just doing business plans using Mind Manager and, uh, and doing project management. I haven't done a lot of project management, but I know, I know Alex has uh, been in that uh, realm helping people with, uh, with um, uh, project management uh, using this as well. Um, and, and then we've got uh, our website. This is kind of a a blah looking one because this is the actual one we use for our, our it's not all colored and fancy uh, but this is the actual one that we use for our website um, and then this is the one that I want to spend just a few minutes on and then Alex is going to kind of uh, blow things out of the water um, on on how how we can take it up a step but in a previous um, live stream, I talked about Mind Manager in conjunction with Act Marketing Automation, and talked about you should have a have a plan, some sort of a marketing or communication plan that you can use to track what it is you're going to be doing, and then use Act Marketing Automation to deploy that content out to your clients. And in this case, I mean, I used Act Marketing Automation to send a, an invitation out to you guys, and so. How this basically works is you've got, I've got in here all the different quarters. So I've got it uh, the whole year and then I've got it broken into quarters. And then I just have the different types of activities that I'm going to use. And uh, let me just move to the screen here. Hang on, there we go. And and then in here you can see, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see in here that I've got um, other information, a little more detailed information. I can see in here that uh, I've got a webinar, but I've got uh, you can see there's a cost. You can see the people that are involved with it. And if I go over to here, over to uh, let's see, right there, um, you can see in here who the uh, who the resources are, and I've picked from a from a drop down list. I can pick those uh, resources, and then there's a dollar amount based on the resources. And then I've got, you know, maybe this particular event is going to has a out of pocket cost, and I can put that in in there, and it will actually uh, total that up right there. And you can see I've got one right here as well, and it puts a total there. And then if I go to the beginning, it'll show me for the year what I've got for total costs. So I can set a budget up for my marketing. I'll know exactly what my marketing is. And then I can mess around with the different events that actually cost me money. And maybe it's just labor hours and you want to track your labor hours of how much we put into this. You can actually do this. So one of the things I want to, want to mention is that, you know, maybe you want to, uh, um, just like a business plan, a marketing plan is part of a business plan and have this kind of linked in to something like that. So this is something that we, we spend uh, a lot of time on in here is, is a marketing plan as well. Uh, the next one that I want to show you is, and this is something we created. I haven't developed it further because it, it's something that really internally you would develop yourself. And that is a standard operating procedure or, or uh, SOP. And this is where most company, I shouldn't say most companies, because when, I, when I've done a, 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 a a questionnaire about how many people uh, have uh, have written documents of their SOP. <laughs> Not a lot, um, but those who do, they have them in binders and stuff. And one of the things that we we developed this a long, long time ago and share it uh, share it with uh, those who would like it is creating an SOP in here. And just for an example, if I go under administration here and I go address structure, 
in, in the notes area, I can actually put in what the address structure is. So I could fill this whole thing up, this whole SOP in one document. You can have one person assigned to manage it. And then what they can do is they can export this out to an HTML5 map. And that looks something like this. And I've got it just local here. Uh, let's see, desktop, HTML. And this could be something that you have on your intranet or your in uh, uh, your intranet or internet, however you want to put it. And uh, it loads up. And then people have access to it anytime, anywhere, as long as they have the link. And it will bring them in and they can see the standard operating procedure uh, for the company. And, it's, and as you update it, it will just continue to update. So if I go back over here to address and then just adjust the lines here, move that over. You can see that they have access to the SOP anytime that they desire. So there are a ton of things that you can actually uh, do within, uh, within this uh, application. Um, it's kind of like how I, how I mentioned to people using ACT. It's a blank canvas. What do you want to do with it? And let your mind run. Um, and it's amazing some of the things that, uh, that you can do with this. Alex, any any thoughts on what I've just uh, what I've just uh, brought up here? Definitely, the examples that you've had to share have been very very impactful during our discussions. And I, as always, when I look at these files, I'm always saying, "Hey, I would think adding this particular feature set is going to improve your life." And and one such example is having tags that you could park on the actual topics themselves. Now, it may get a little redundant at times because obviously the tag name may be a duplication of the name of the actual topic, but it gives you another step of leverage with that file because once you apply tags, that's a piece of filterable content. So if you were looking for everything that was relative to one facility or one piece of equipment, you could have that tag become the springboard to getting to that information faster even in your HTML exported version. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so even in the HTML, you can actually sit, use those tags as a leverage in there as well. Yes, absolutely. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Well, let's uh, let's jump over to your screen, Alex, and then you can kind of go through, through that. And uh, this particular one, this one for the communication example that I've got here, um, Alex is going to... I sent that template template to him, and he's kind of uh, put it on steroids and has uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, is taken it to the next level. And by the way, uh, any of the templates that I've shown you here, if you're interested, uh, let me know. You can put it in the comments, and uh, and then we will. Uh, uh, I can make sure you uh, you get those. Uh, let me just see here. We've got uh, we've got Susan online here. Uh, the link does oh the oh the link doesn't work oh I'm um, that's weird. Well, Susan, if you're not in there, I'll put you in there. We'll make sure that uh, you and you and Scott are are in there. So that's funny that that link doesn't work. I'll put up I'll put the uh, the um, link on the screen again in a few minutes. Okay, Alex, let's uh, let's jump over to you. Awesome. So this section is actually going to be discussed by my partner and uh, account executive, Mark McGauley. Uh He's going to kind of walk you through some of the top use cases and then explain a little bit about our licensing model, what to expect from the different platform kind of tiers or packages, that sort of thing. So can you do that fancy animation where Mark rolls in? There yeah, I love that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it. With my PMP background, I love projects. And my favorite is project rollups into a master project dashboard. But um, since I've been at Mind Manager, I've opened up, um, we've, we've, um, I call, we call it um, mindstorming, but it's a version of brainstorming that we just recently um, put out on our website. But it's got me excited too. It's just a different way of looking at brainstorming and capturing that information when you've got all the right brains on the same um, topic. But um, 
But I'm going to let um, Alex will show you some more project uh, management related um, details earlier. What I wanted to mention first and foremost is some of the most recent um, improvements to my manager. The, the best ones that helped us out were the Microsoft Teams integration and also the co-editing because when COVID hit, we started working remotely and with Teams integration, it became our virtual office with my manager being like a virtual whiteboard and we could have our team meetings in these various team um, um, environments uh, with that various um, with our projects and our our goals right there at hand and and they're living documents to where we're all um, updating them but um, you'll be able to see can you go to the next slide Alex definitely Thank you. Thank you very much. Here's us in a nutshell, just basically all of our products. Obviously, Enterprise is our flagship. It's our business class environment um, solution. It has one license key. It has SSO, and it's designed for large-scale deployment. But we also do have single-user licensing for, you know, um, smaller teams. Um, I, we say less than five. My Manager Pro is ideal. It does include both co-editing and Microsoft's Teams integration. Beautiful thing about co-editing is, and a lot of our wealth advisors and financial advisors use it, but with co-editing, you can launch a session, mind manager session with a client or colleague and interact with them and they do not have to have a mind manager license. You just put them in and then all of a sudden they have full, full visibility and you can work on something together collaboratively so so that's one of a, another feature we'll, we'll probably get into here shortly but enough about product let's talk about how you can make a difference and Alex will explain his Swiss Army Knife Theory on my manager awesome <laughs> that's a good title Swiss Army Knife Theory very cool well thank you Mark I appreciate you got kind, Mark, kind of just guiding before you, Mark just oh, before sorry. you go there um, yes just to, just to help the the people uh, watching, what are the types of people that are using Mind Manager? Like from a high wow. end to, to lower end, what you know? What's the spectrum? It's it's guardrail to guardrail. <laughs> Honestly, um, Gary, we we have law professors that say that you know what I can only teach law in Mind Manager because it's beyond two D. It gets three D and beyond that. Um, we have a lot of federal agencies, CDC, um, the, the Sky Security, NASA, government, you name it. A lot of people do process flow management and risk management. Um, there's just so many use cases, and that's why we throw out use Swiss Army Knife, because we learn from our customers sometimes. They've and one of my favorite is um, Alex does his Christmas list in, in Mind Manager. It's <laughs> with budgets, deadlines, and he can drag and drop to see where that budget goes. But and that's another one of my favorite features is I did way too many um, pivot tables back in my Dell days. But he, with Mind Manager, you can export that data into um, Mind Manager um, from Excel, and then you've got a virtual pivot table that's drag and drop. And that to me is invaluable. It's especially when you're in front of an audience. So there's a ton of use cases. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a solopreneur or you're a uh, NASA, uh, you know, everybody in between kind of a thing. Exactly, exactly. And we find out new ones all the time. We have some universities putting their syllabus in Mind Manager. Um, knowledge management, you know, we have so much tribal knowledge and so many organizations. A lot of people are documenting their processes, just like you were showing, standardizing and having it on there. Um, who was, it? I think it was Northrop Grumman. He goes, Mark, you're not gonna believe this, but we run this organization on a lot of Excel <laughs> spreadsheets and SharePoint. And he goes, we've been using my manager to be that central hub and go out and grab those Excel data into a master document. But fascinating, fascinating use cases. And um, I'm excited for us to work on ACT. When we crack that full integration between the two, um, yeah, I, the phones are going to blow up. <laughs> yep, I agree. I agree. All right, Alex, sorry uh, that I interrupted you there. No, no, that was absolutely uh, important to share. Uh, one of my, my anecdotal stories is uh, being a part of the initiative for COVID-19. I worked with Pfizer for many, many months on getting them up to speed on how my manager could help them as they were doing their research uh, around how to best serve the public and uh, come up with a solution for everyone that was uh, starting to get 
you know, put under lockdown and those kinds of things. So when you speak about the use cases, they are really far reaching and they are definitely impacting lives around the world. So my manager is one of those special tools and it's why I continue to be amazed. Like Mark said, each and every day we're having conversations with customers that are using it in new and fascinating ways. So let's start to talk a little bit about how you would become a, a good user uh, at Mind Manager early on. So here in the upper ribbon, there is the help section. Now this has a tutorial environment that is built within it. And I can't speak enough about the awesome job our product development team did on these modules. These are not just videos that you are going to watch, but rather content that you're gonna follow along with. So it's actually gonna help you build muscle memory as you are going through the process of learning that particular use case. Let's say for example, you have a goal to become more organized. Well, here's a entire module that will show you each and every feature in Mind Manager that works toward that end goal. Now, as you become a little bit more of an advanced user, then you'll probably want to learn things like mastering Mind Manager or using an advanced feature called Smart Rules, which we will have a chance to walk through today. But ultimately, Smart Rules allows you to automate the content that's in your document so that literally you can import content from one system using maybe Excel as a, a handshake between the two systems and then have the data be uh, scrubbed and kind of reviewed by the rules that you've written and then it, it can change the outcome and the output as you then make Mind Manager the central hub for that new set of information. Lastly, you can create presentations within Mind Manager. It is not the same as creating a PowerPoint. You don't lose any of the functionality that the mind map has to offer. And like Gary said, it is a completely wide open canvas so you can layer content together. And we'll talk about that as we start to take a look at some of our templates as well. So Gary, before we go too far down that rabbit hole, I just want to make sure we don't have any questions from the audience relative to templates or that sort of thing. Uh, nothing as of yet. And, and okay. just, uh, just uh, you know, for those who are, who are out there uh, watching, uh, by all means, ask any questions you wish, and, and I will, uh, I'll be the moderator and, and uh, for those two, uh, Alex, as we're going along. Awesome. So let's go ahead and jump into this new tab here in the upper corner. And this is actually the area that Gary was talking about just a moment ago. So this is your template selection screen. Now let's go through a couple of different things you are seeing version 23. So there's a new feature called whiteboarding. And that kind of piggybacks on the experience of the free form map from our previous builds. The difference here is that we've added some additional functionality, including the visual effect of having post-it notes. Uh, so that's something that is forth, uh, forthcoming in our next release. So I'm obviously putting it through its beta testing now. Now our traditional mapping environments are these top five here. These are what we would call hierarchy-based diagrams. So a quick example that Gary showed you of his content marketing strategy was broken out in a timeline fashion just like this. This is the exact way Gary was able to roll up the cost of his different elements because the hierarchy diagrams are seen as interconnected pieces of data that all have one kind of parent topic, if you will. And that would obviously be your starting point. That could be the same for the org chart. It just grows downwardly instead of to the right, like a timeline. Tree map, right map, and radio map all fall within that overall umbrella. Now, to the right here, we have the basic and concept maps experience for flow charting. These operate in a different capacity, and you'll be able to tell visually anytime you launch one of these templates because the topics are bordered in a green color whereas the hierarchy diagrams are bordered in blue. So anytime you're using one of these, you can of course mix and match the pieces of content. So if you need a hierarchy diagram alongside a process diagram or some kind of a flow chart, you can do that, but you just wanna make sure that you're using them to their fullest strengths. The main reason here is these items don't have the ability to roll data together because they're not truly connected, right? We're drawing relationships on a board as if we were using a marker, whereas the hierarchy diagram have relationships that are connected and you can expand and collapse the branches. And that's why the content rolls up to the higher levels. So I, obviously that's very theoretical. I will show uh, examples of both of those, but that's a very, very big distinction to make early on as a new user, what kind of template is going to be right for your project or your initiative. Now down below, once you become a little bit more familiar with the blank versions up above, 
this section down here is actually where you're going to then get a little bit of that reverse engineering environment that uh, Mark was telling you about. So let's say, for example, you are going to be managing a project. You could start with one of the items from this folder, and it will come with a few more bells and whistles. Sometimes it's going to have advanced features kind of baked into it. Uh, a great example comes from our legacy collection. It's one of my favorites. So if I open the legacy collection folder, I can then go to strategic planning and I have a cost benefit analysis and it's a detailed breakout of the different elements that I may need to kind of reference. So here we have the planning costs. Let's say that we're going to list that at $151 and we've got some development that's going to be $350 and you can see that the content is now rolling to the development cost parent topic and then also connecting directly with the overall kind of parent topic of the entire umbrella, which is going to be this project name right here at the top of the screen. Now, of course, as I said, this kind of information can be reverse engineered and it's all done on the advanced tab here using the formulas option. Now, of course, this is kind of a high level overview of what my manager is capable of. But if there is anyone out there that has questions that are of a more specific nature, we can certainly point you in the direction of resources such as our live webinar events where we host uh, on a monthly basis a specific set of topics that have been generated by our users over the course of the year. So we have that ongoing and we can certainly send you any of the recorded sessions that will really dive deep into any of the features that we show today. So templates is a great way to get used to Mind Manager without having to bang your head against the wall and come up with it all on your own. Because again, on day number one, you could literally jump into this template and get a lot of efficiency out of it. So uh, I think these are a great way to kick things off. Now, speaking of templates, I actually put together an example for a financial planner. So this is someone that is responsible for prospecting, marketing, customer service, compliance, and overall, she's just trying to make the experience for her customers a smooth, transparent uh, way of doing business and keeping everyone up to date on where they are with the status and how their financial journey is unfolding. So she's got a series of four different files that she uses on a regular basis. Some are personal dashboards that she uses to kind of identify who her clients are and kind of keep everything under uh, under her thumb. She has another set of documents that she uses for marketing and kind of getting the word out about her services and uh, her skill set. She's got uh, the client services file that she actually can uh, allow them to use that way as they start to get further into their own journey, uh, they can really start to use My Manager as a tracking uh, element so that they know, hey, by this time, you know, three months from now, I should be at X dollar amount on, you know, these particular tools that I'm using, et cetera. So it keep, keeps everything uh, under, under your visibility and nothing is lost or siloed. So let's take a look at some of the use cases here inside of these examples. So for the prospecting section, uh, we have an Excel example, and actually Mark also alluded to this, but I'm going to be pointing out how to bring content over and turn into a, a bit of a reverse pivot table, if you will. So pulling data from other places and being able to have that create the map for you is probably one of the easiest ways to get a well-formed document in Mind Manager very, very quickly. And I start with this because I don't ever want people to think that it's going to be an overwhelming process to get going with Mind Manager. So I want you to keep that in mind as we move through this example. Even if this was your very first day and this was the only feature that you learned how to use, this could get you extremely far uh, in the long run. So I'm not going to start with the traditional, here's how you build a map. I want you to take one feature and see how you can take a, a world of data and build maps out of that instead. So we'll go to the advanced ribbon up above and the feature we're looking for is the Excel data mapper. So I'm going to go ahead and create a floating topic over here, and I'm going to call this Project ABC. So let's go ahead and minimize that photograph. So we've got Project ABC here. Let's go ahead and use the Insert tab to put a boundary around the project. So this project is completely separate from the dashboard file. And now as we start to add content to it, you'll see exactly how it grows. We'll open the Excel Data Mapper option from our binder tabs here on the right. I'm going to press next and go into the local space and it's going to ask me where am I going to find this file. That's going to be one of our advanced integrations in the Excel data mapper folder. 
So let's go ahead and do event planning. I believe Gary was mentioning this when he showed his timeline as well. So next we are going to then select a preset and I don't want you to think that this was something difficult to create. In fact, on the next slide, you'll see exactly how this was put together and it will make perfect sense. So I'm going to go back to integrations, Excel data mapper and event planning. So this time I'm in the same folder, but I'm not selecting the actual file. Rather, I'm selecting the preset. And what that allows me to do is on the next screen, I have kind of predetermined how I want this information broken out that's coming over from the original source data. So let's take a look at this project in its native environment. I'm going to use the attachment option right here on the screen to then bring over the actual Excel file. So I know it looks like I'm doing the same thing over and over again, but it's actually three different parts for bringing over the one document. So I'm going to go back to my integrations experience, Excel data mapper and event planning. So I'm now selecting the exact same file I had before, but rather than importing it, I'm just going to be attaching it. So we get a side by side comparison of what the map produced and what the data looked like to begin with. So we can see that we have a regional breakdown as our first level. The second level is going to be the actual name of the event that we're going to be attending or hosting. So what I'll do from here is hold control on my keyboard and press return, and that's gonna give me a subtopic. So from here, I can write the word regional, and maybe we want a second look at this content based on status. Let's go ahead and highlight those. We'll go to format, make them bold, and we'll increase the size a little bit there. So we've got two different looks at the same set of source material. Now we can open our original file and see that using my manager's built in browser here on the right side of the screen. So it's going to again update our binder tabs and it's going to take us into the actual Excel document that was attached. Keep in mind, this is a view only kind of experience from the perspective of the Excel document. So I can open this up a little bit further and we'll slide that over to the left as well. So from here, you can see the status of the different events. You can see the campaign numbers, rating, and the region where it takes place, the type of event, cost, total number of participants, and the date. So a pretty straightforward list. And again, I don't know how to build a map, but I do know how to use this feature. So it will help build a map for me. Now I'm going to select the regional topic here, go back to the Excel data mapper. And now you can see regional breakdown is going to be number one. So we'll go ahead and push apply. After it does a little bit of thinking, it's going to then formulate the map right before our eyes. Here we are. All right. So now that we have the breakout, you can see that it grows upwardly and to the right. That may not be the best for the sake of screen real estate. So instead, what we'll do is go to the formatting ribbon here at the top, change our layout and put it in an org chart format. That way we are now looking at everything in nice tiered columns, region north, mid, south, and any regions that are not set. And again, we can have another breakout of this by going back to the Excel data mapper, changing that breakout from region over to status, and again, apply that here at this parent topic. And here we are. One more time, I'm gonna change that layout into org chart, and here we are. So we have a approved item that is about 24K. What's planned and upcoming is about 33 and open events and canceled events as well. And then obviously my manager supports drag and drop. So if you have some serious events that are planned, but you go over budget, you can simply shift the focus and kind of move some things around. And as you can see, you can get back on track from a costing perspective very, very easily. So it helps with playing with scenarios and kind of doing some evaluation so that you don't bite off more than you can chew. Uh, so Gary, now that we've walked through a series of these examples, talked about some templates, are there any questions relative to this info? Uh-oh, hope we haven't lost Gary. Uh, well, no worries. We'll push forward and talk uh, a little bit oh, more sorry, about I had, that. Oh, sorry. I had myself muted. Sorry about that, Alex. Ah. Yeah, no, uh, no. I just had uh, uh, one person said, you know, my head is spinning, you know, just be, just because <laughs> it looks it looks daunting, you know, but it is, you know, once you, once you play with it. Uh, and then I have another comment. Uh, this is amazing software. The simplicity of use is, is uh, just perfect. Let me just pop this up here. Um, Susan uh, Kellett st stated that. Yeah, just uh, just amazing Thank you, software. Susan. 
I can't take credit for the development of it, but I will say uh, I appreciate uh, that you think I'm pretty smooth with the delivery. But uh, no, the <laughs> development team behind this platform is amazing and they are always pushing the boundary. Uh, so la let's talk a little bit more about how our development team uses Mind Manager to take it to the next level. So that's going to be a brainstorming example, actually, and it's going to show the process behind uh, how Mind Manager product development team members are using our own systems and software on the back end to improve your experience as an everyday user. So let's go ahead and close down the Excel data mapper. We won't be using that for this example. So this is brainstorming, but with a twist. The smart rule environment is again that area that allows you from the advanced ribbon to automate your documents. So I'm going to double click here in the white space. You can see that there's just a traditional kind of posted note example. But the moment that I shift it into one of the quadrants on the screen here, a couple of things are going to take place. The color of the topic is going to change. It's going to get a numeric value, and it's going to then list a series of questions that have to be answered to essentially validate if it has been placed in the right um, quadrant. Now, this is what we use when coming up with new ideas for our own software. Uh, is it a differentiator? Is it answering a customer pain point? Is it going to be a marketable feature? And lastly, of course, when do we need to have this in the software, right? Is this something for the roadmap two years from now? Is this two weeks out? You know, when do you want to see this materialized? And so that helps us to really have a focused discussion on what we're going to be aiming for with our next release, with our next uh, our next bug fix, you know, whatever the case may be, but using my manager as the way to kind of get things in front of us uh, and then, of course, evaluate where to spend our time. It could, couldn't be much simpler than that. And then of course, as I said, if I do transition these into the other locations, it is going to adhere to the rules that are set for each one of the squares. So ultimately, it's a great way to kind of develop a SWOT analysis, uh, to do brainstorming exercises, uh, and just strategic planning overall. So let's take a look at uh, how smart rules work. So let's go into the edit rule option. And I'll go ahead and select this one from here. And the reason I'm spending the time to explain this particular feature set is because this is a true differentiator for a lot of the, ma the mapping tools that are out there on the market. So essentially you create a rule and give it a title. And then you're gonna, going to determine what the trigger is that makes it happen, makes it come alive inside the file. Now the triggers are a varied set of options. I mean, it can be the icons that you place on a topic. It can be the, the way that you've tagged it with some kind of a custom naming convention. It can be the cost of something that you're working on, the due date. You can even look at something as simple as the topic text itself. So I mean, honestly, it is a very, very useful tool and it's something that you won't find in the other platforms out there. And then lastly, you're going to identify the different effects that need to take place if this trigger happens to be true based on any of the topics or the content in your diagrams. And that's how we were able to make it look different, give it a priority level, make the, uh, the font bold, and then of course, ask a series of questions. So here are all of those properties that we just listed. And so this is literally how that information is now being plugged onto each of those post-it notes once it is uh, a part of one of, one of the appropriate quadrants. So Alex, smart rules, is a game uh, changer. Just, yes. Just a, just a quick question. Um, you've got multiple effects. Can you have multiple triggers as well? Absolutely. In fact, on one of your examples, uh, I decided to build in one of the, the rules with uh, multi kind of authentication, if you will, which I hate, okay. by the way. Oh, my gosh. When I'm trying to log in and I'm late to a meeting and then they say, hey, we've got to send you a text and call you and log you in. But in Mind Manager, in Smart Rules, it is awesome. Don't worry. Awesome. We've got you. Great. Covered. Thank you. So let's actually go a, a step further and look at that communications example now. And I'll explain a little bit more about the rules that are within it. So we've got the idea here that we're breaking everything out from a yearly perspective and then kind of then compartmentalizing that into the quarters and where things are going to be taking place. Well, in this example, uh, the original file was just a pretty flat document and there wasn't any way to kind of sift through what happens when uh, and being able to identify 
you know, how many of each element we're going to tackle in that year or in that quarter, because everything was just named based on their, their topic. But what I've actually done is added a rule. So let's take a look at editing our rules and we'll go down. So you can see that we have a Q1 rule, Q2, we have the admin 101 rule, the T and T rule, and the live rule, the webinar rule, Q3 and Q4. So what we did here was anything that was going to be live was our number one priority. So as we move through the, the examples, you'll be able to see all of the top priority items. Anything that was going to be a recorded video session was going to be our second priority. And then our live events and uh, those the, the kinds of things that we do, I guess, less throughout the year. Maybe we only go to one or two in-person events, but maybe we host, you know, 10 or 12 webinars. Uh, that was going to be our third level uh, event as far as uh, the level of priority. So all of these rules are now operating in the background and making this document a little bit more helpful for us, even down to the fact that if we wanted to know how many times we've hosted an admin 101 session, all we have to do now is go over to our map index here on the side of the screen, and then we can look at things based on their categories. So right now I can see that in this document we have two tips and tricks experiences that I can reference for a customer, and this is grabbing things across the different quarters. So that way if we've got one in Q2 and one in Q3, uh, obviously I don't have to scroll all the way throughout the document, but rather I can expand this branch here, and it will allow me to jump directly to our first tips and tricks here, and then it will take me to tips and tricks on the month of February. So that way, as this content grows uh, month by month, quarter by quarter, we get a nice uh, little easy to follow listing here. And it's going to ultimately just track the actual word tips and tricks as text inside of the, the topic. So let's say, for example, I go ahead and start typing in the word here. You can see that it is now going to start adding that based on the SMART rule over here. So now I can go all the way through this document to find out everywhere that we are discussing the tips and tricks about ACT, about Mind Manager, you know, about anything that is important to me and my team. So having those rules operating on the back end will again help you become a lot more efficient. And then of course we have the same example with uh, tracking down all of our admin 101 content as well. Now taking that idea a step further, we could also have a separate view completely dedicated to the meta information that we place on our topics. So let's go to the view tab here at the top of the screen and you can see that we have the icon based view. And here we are. So keep in mind that we have rules that are automatically applying the uh, numeric values to these topics based on the keywords that are going on. So things like webinar, things like uh, live streams, uh, any of that content is going to be our first priority because we're producing it week after week, month after month, whereas uh, videos on demand, maybe that's just something that we are going to start testing out. Maybe we found that uh, during our live sessions and our webinars, when people get the chance to interact with us, we have a better turnout. Maybe we have more headcount, uh, whereas videos on demand, they kind of get lost along the way. That might be the case. Also, you have the ability to then see this content as a a card of sorts. It's a topic info card. So on any of these uh, ellipses, you can actually select it and then move the information around. So I, if I needed to, I could grab the start date from this item and dra drag and drop it to the event here. And it's going to update the content on the diagram as well as on the info card. And then of course, if I needed to assign a resource, to this event, I could do that here as well. And on my keyboard, all I have to do is press the word at. Oh, looks like it's not highlighted, there we go. I could press at, and then any of the resources that are already a part of the map will then become visible, and I can then highlight Gary's name, and here we are. We can see that Gary is a part of the actual event now. We can see that uh, it's going to be a resource cost of about $200 for him to run or host this event, and that can be updated and changed by using our, ta our task info environment here on the side of the screen. So we can use our resource rates option, and we can look at Gary for how available he is and uh, how much he's going to charge per hour. So he's available for 40 hours a week and he's charging $200 per hour. That lets us know that our event here is only going to be a single hour. Now, obviously, if that 
uh, gets changed, let's say we increase that to eight hours, you can see that it's going to do the calculation for us there on the back end. So not only are you able to use the views to kind of filter the information out, if something needs to be worked on while in the view, simply open the topic info card and then you can carry on from there. Now keep in mind, this is just one way to view the information. Now if you have, uh, let's say for example, things based on their level of progress, you can identify all of the items that are finished. Maybe you have some things that are up and coming, so you're gonna add those to a not done kind of experience. Maybe you've already hosted the podcast, for example, but you still need to do some editing on it, so you're about 50% done, for example. And that will give you another view of how healthy your initiatives are without having to keep everything in the context of a map, right? The map may be great for managing the information, when you need to add and kind of drag and drop and do those sorts of things. But when you need to have a discussion about status, maybe you need to cover something with stakeholders, maybe these breakouts make more sense for them to digest what's going on. So uh, just another set of options for you there. And then of course, at any time, you can of course go back to the map and any of the changes that were made in the other views are going to be visible right here inside the mapping canvas. So don't think of them as two different experiences. It's just two different views for the same information. And then of course, there is a third view. If you are one of those people that is heavily into project management, you could simply choose the show Gantt Pro option from up above as well. And that's gonna break out every task here on the left, give your start dates, duration, and progress across the top. And you can see our smart rules are taking effect here, changing the fill color of these topics to green. So that's how we can identify that these are all completed. And then of course we can see everything that's going to happen in May of 2023, broken out here in our Gantt chart as well. And of course this could go on for months or years if you needed to. If you would like, you could also export this content so that you have a separate set of uh, reference material to take with you along the way. So you could pull out an, an image of the chart or an image of the chart and the grid. That way, as you move through you know, this quarter, you may want to kind of summarize what your level of, of project health was. Well, taking a quick snapshot of the overall grid uh, would allow you to then park it as a piece of content within uh, that quarter's kind of summary report, if you will. Uh, so one of the other things that I added to this was the ability to then use that view tab from the perspective of the tags as well. So now we can see everything that would fall under a quarterly breakdown from top to bottom, rather than having it go left to right. Uh, you can also look at it from the perspective of Kanban as far as status to do, doing, and done. So we're trying to meet you where you are as a user. If you're someone that truly enjoys the mapping canvas, stick with that. If you're one of those people that likes things like monday.com, these can all be a reference to how that could be used. And then of course, if you're somebody that is uh, just getting familiar with my manager and you have tons of data that's in other systems and you just wanna get it into a map, then I would recommend the Excel data mapper for sure. Uh, one of the other things that I think is, is really helpful is seeing the idea of the two different kinds of diagrams. So early on, I told you about the uh, hierarchy-based diagrams. That is pretty much what we've been working in so far today. But here on the left, you can see that these are what we would call the relation-based diagrams. So they are literally lines that are drawn that we have to connect to kind of identify how the flow of information is moving, how the flow of a process uh, happens, and uh, what you can do along the way. Well, here is a breakout of how those can coexist all within one file. So here on the left, we have an overview of a series of tasks. And then on the right, we have the budget for that actual series of tasks. And then the overall project health is shown here at the top. So let's zoom in a little bit and you can see all of the pieces of meta information on the topics themselves. So from here, we can see that we have a lock symbol that is denoting that this task itself is not editable. It is a summary task grabbing content from the lower levels. So if we uncheck some of these items, you can see that again, the overall project health is being updated automatically. You can also see that the smart rule is immediately taking effect. Because this item was due uh, months ago, 
and that it's not completed here by checking off the box, it's going to show you this red uh, fill color as well as the alert symbol. This is another way that MyMetric can help to understand your data and then represent it back to you in a way that you can then take action quickly. You could have a, a series of rules that uh, all help you along the way. And then lastly, uh, you can also have a series of rules that look at things like cost. So let's take a look at how we would build something along those lines. We'll go to advanced and we'll go to smart rules and we'll add a rule here and we'll call it the uh, $20,000 rule, for example. So the 20K rule. Now we're going to look for the trigger being the uh, cost here, not of our resource, but we're going to look for properties and it's going to be our actual cost that we're going to be tracking and if it is greater than or equal to twenty thousand dollars we want it to become a fill color that is yellow and let's say we want to add another effect that gives it an icon and let's say it's a pay attention to me icon there we go and let's say that we also want to automatically assign it to someone and it will be Alex's responsibility to look into it. So I'll go ahead and press OK here. And now you can see that it's identifying that we have a budget relative concern that the CFO and Alex are going to be working on. So again, taking a series of documents from one system, plugging them into a mind mapping canvas using that import and having a series of rules that will help that document really speak to you and tell you where to focus is going to be one of the top ways that my manager helps you become a much more efficient worker uh, so gary any questions i know we're coming up to the end of our discussion i did want to leave some time for for your sign off and for mark if he had any other comments but i want to make sure we address any other questions that may have come up no other questions but i am just <laughs> Yeah, I thought I, I thought I knew mind manager. Um, I'm feeling like a kindergartner right now. <laughs> there are so many cool well, things that you can do. You gave me a very awesome document to work on, and I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, but obviously, like I said, this is a gorgeous file. I can see automatically uh, that it has been a game changer for you and your team. And my goal was just to show you what you can do at the next level, right? I, yeah. I couldn't take any credit for the awesome s setup that you have. And you know, Gary, one thing that you didn't show everybody that I think is an absolute phenomenal piece of the, the puzzle is the ability that you can turn these into... Uh, map parts so that you can literally grab one out right. of a repository when that that moment comes up did you want a second to demonstrate that yeah absolutely so over here on the on the right hand side so let's just say i'm just going to move this along and let's just say uh, October and I want to add some um, components now in this map I've got the components set as types here just so that if a person wants the map the map parts don't automatically get to put in there so you have to put them in so I've got kind of a uh, some templates set up already in in types uh, which you could drag and drop but uh, in order to make this a little bit more streamlined what I've done is I've added over here on the map parts, that's the map parts right there, and I just created a folder, and you can just right mouse click and create a new folder, call it, uh, call it your company, and then inside of there, I've just put in the, the parts that I want. So if I want to have a live stream, I can just click on live stream, and then if I want to have a survey, I can add a survey. Uh, maybe I want to add some action to this particular one. Well, there's some action items for what I need to do to, to, uh, to make that live stream work the way I want it to. So you can use map parts, predetermined uh, um, components that can help build your structure as, as you require, especially if sometimes you use that and sometimes you don't. This gives you the manually manual ability to kind of frame this and have it structured. And like, like, I, uh, like was, was mentioned, you can go in here, and in these things, I've got, 
I've got all the information in here that you could just basically fill it in. All the structure is there. Uh, you can manip manipulate the templates yourself and, and adjust them the way you want. But this allows you to actually say, well, what are we trying to accomplish? Who's the, t who's the audience that we want? Um, you know, what's the, you know, what's the call to action at the end? Uh, all sorts of different things that you can do. And so um, that's kind of, uh, kind of these map parts, how they can be used that way. Awesome. Uh, so like I said, uh, an awesome file and uh, the way that you're using it was already top tier. And I hope that uh, what you've learned from us over the past couple of weeks as we put this together has uh, been beneficial and helpful in the long run. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anything else, uh, Alex, that you wanted to show at this time? No, no, I'm, I'm done. And I thank everyone for their time and attention. I want to turn it over to yourself and Mark in case we have any closing remarks. Cool, cool. So, um, so everybody who's on here, uh, we want to let you know um, an email will be going out with a discount code. And right now, um, the Mind Manager Pro is two thirty nine Canadian, uh, discounted for one ninety nine for limited time only. We don't know how long yet, but it'll be a limited time. And uh, an email will be going out. Uh, we hel held off. We were going to have the email go out today. Unfortunately, uh, we hadn't finished the, uh, the, uh, the shop on our uh, website to actually place the order. The Mind Manager uh, landing page is there. So you can go to the landing page. It's corelogics.ca slash mindmanager. And if you go to there, that's the landing page where you can go in. You can get a trial and, uh, and try the, uh, download the trial and try it out. We also have uh, Mind Manager Enterprise, which is the same price, $239, but on discount for $199 Canadian and uh, minimum five users. And we do have a trial for that as well, uh, but you do need to get in touch with me. There is no download for that. You get in touch with me and then I set you up. And that just, oh, one of the questions uh, uh, for uh, Alex or Mark is the difference between enterprise and pro. Awesome. I actually have that slide back up just in case. I kind of thought that would be uh, on its way. So uh, if you want to jump into my screen, Mark can kind of walk you through some of that. Yeah, let me pull you up here, Mark. There you go. Thanks, team. Um, yeah, um, Enterprise is our true business class solution. It's it's geared for large scale deployment and ease of deployment. It has an ad admin portal where the admin can assign or reassign licenses instantly by product, you know, by project or whatnot. So we have a lot of people that maximize their seat count by just um, rotating the licenses where they're needed most. But um, but from a feature perspective, you're not you you, you don't have single sign on things like that. But um, a lot of our customers, what they'll do is start out with Pro, probably two or three licenses. And when they reach five, we have a prorated conversion type process to get them, take the value from their current licensing and apply that towards a transition to enterprise. Because once you get to five or more users, it just makes more sense to have that admin portal, one license key for everybody, SSO and ESA deployment. Yeah, one of the questions is, is, is this subscription? Uh, yes, they are subscriptions. They do have a perpetual license uh, if you want to go that route, uh, but then you don't get all the updates, and, uh, and they, do, they have updates every year, uh, and I always look forward uh, to that. I actually just signed up as a beta user myself uh, so that I can see some of the cool things that you were, uh, you were alluding to there, Alex. Um, so, so yes, subscription, uh, but you can get the pro as a perpetual license, uh, if that's something you, you, uh, you want. Definitely. So we're, we're not going to go, um, Adobe on you guys. We're going to have both solutions as we move forward because it depends, you know, the, a lot of our fed customers, they, they buy, buy all over again every three years and they don't care about the latest and greatest but but we have both solutions out there for whatever if it's you know capex or opex however your software is being um, taken care of we have both solutions all right okay so uh like i said for those who are on our email list we'll get an email uh early next week it'll be well 
Uh, Monday is, and I totally forgot about this, but Monday is Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving, so we'll be <laughs> taking the day off. Um, and then, uh, uh, oh, another question pops up here. Uh, what support do you have? Very good question. We've got 24-7 support. It's both phone and online. And through the online version, you get a case uh, a case number that, that goes throughout that entire troubleshooting issue or whatever you have. The other thing we do, and this is beautiful, Gary, you know, we, we opened it up to you as well, is the complimentary demo slash training sessions. Once you um, deploy My Manager, it does help to get that initial um, what would you say, hand-holding to, to get out there and, and start using it. We will um, help with some template stuff like that. There's no cost to that, but we just want to make sure that, one, you realize what you have and know how to use it and um, to the most of your advantage. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, again, like I would mentioned, an email will come out with a discount code that you'll be able to pu purchase off of our site. Um, and that will happen. We'll have the site probably up later today. So the email may go out later today, but probably more like, uh, more like uh, Tuesday morning, uh, we'll have that email go out to you. Um, you can get the trial now if you go to corelogics.ca backslash um, uh, mind manager. And you can go there now, and we have a landing page uh, where you can actually learn more. You can uh, you can click on the buy thing, but it's not going to the uh, to the store yet. So that that will happen probably later today or over the weekend, uh, and we'll go from there. So one of the things we want to do is we've got we've got a giveaway. Let's just check to see if there's any more registrations. Um, if if you haven't registered, uh, Jerry, I have put you in there, uh, but if you haven't registered. Just uh, message, uh, put it in the comments, and just give me your name. I'll put you in there, and then we'll do a draw for a free copy um, of Mind Manager. I believe it's the subscription. It's a one-year subscription. Is that right, uh, Mark? That's correct. Full-blown yeah. Mind Manager Pro with the teams and the co-editing. Awesome, awesome. And uh, and Alex, maybe what we can do, just as I'm waiting here to see if there's any others that haven't put in. Um, one of the things, so I didn't realize that uh, team, the Teams component could be used also with Pro as well as Enterprise. Is, that's correct? So, yeah, yeah that, maybe what we can do is a, another uh, live stream in a, in a couple of weeks or what have you and kind of show that integration because we have a lot of clients that are uh, adopting the Teams environment both for meetings and other things, and I think that would be a really uh, interesting thing to see. That's a awesome. great idea. I agree 100%. It, it has changed our working environment, no doubt. So yeah. we'll, we'll do a team specific with a co-editing twist just to, for, for the interaction, for sure. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I don't look like I'm getting any more, so we're going to go to the draw here. All right. Let's uh, click to spin. That's a neat little tool. I love it. Well, Jerry, you're the winner. <laughs> Jerry in the house. <laughs> there you go. You get to get on Alex's webinar, too. You get all the, the bells and whistles with that license. We're going to load you up. There you go. There you go. And we're going to do one more. We're going to do one more uh, draw here. Uh, for those of you who are now, we do, may have some people because we are uh, streaming out to LinkedIn and Facebook as well as YouTube, and we may have some non-ACT users. Um, the, uh, we hack, we, we're launching today as well, and the email won't go out until uh, Tuesday as well. Um, uh, for the advisor, um, not the advisor, Act View Plus that we did last week, and we said that we'd launch this week. We'll have uh, trials for you and pricing coming out on uh, Tuesday. You'll get an email. Uh, again, we're just doing up the the uh, shop so that we can you can actually purchase it. So we're going to do a draw for one uh, copy or one subscription for uh, a one year subscription for uh, the um, Act View Plus, and uh, let's just see who that would be. Natalie Thornhill, you are the winner. We'll get that out to you uh, uh, right away here. And uh, 
again, thank you. Thank you guys, everyone. Uh, let me just pop over to the next screen here. So Alex and, and Mark, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, sure appreciate it. Uh, Alex, what a wonderful uh, presentation. Um, it was uh, both informative and mind-blowing. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, looking forward to, to doing more, more of these live streams with you and, and being able to enhance what, what people are doing out there in, in their business environment and making their lives a lot more, uh, a lot easier and a lot more informative for them. I appreciate the opportunity. It has been a blast getting to know you. And uh, like I said, you made it easy, right? The files that you were you were showing me were already pretty top notch. So I just had to kind of show you things that you didn't know. And like we said before, you don't know what you don't know until you don't know. That's right. Absolutely. Mark, any we last like, comments before we go? Just have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're a month behind you. But yeah. um, when you get back next week, let's start talking about a team specific type webinar. I think that's going to be invaluable to your audience. And and um, yeah, but no, this was great. Gentlemen, I'm very impressed. Thank you both for, for helping to, to support this. Awesome. Well, everyone, thank you so much for attending today. All the best. Uh, happy Thanksgiving for those who are in Canada. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.